Hello, everybody. I'm also going to use a script. Mine is just a, a tad bit smaller. Like the prof said, uh, my name is Eugene. I work at Investec Bank, which is a large private bank in Johannesburg. The reason I have an interest in TED is originally I'm from Durban. I grew up here, studied here, and then relocated to Johannesburg. Why am I here? Um, I want to look at an area called digital. It's growing. It's becoming something that we often see in society wherever you look, whether you're an elitist, whether you're um, the person that was out in the street corner selling those flags and those items, everybody is becoming joined, connected, linked. And be it on a mobile phone, be it on one that is a smartphone, one that's not a smartphone, it's where everything is going. It's going to this place where whatever is digital, whatever is connected, is accessible to pretty much anybody. The way the country is going and the way the world is shaping is looking and taking technology and anything that is digital to an out of the ordinary experience. It's what we often throw aside as South Africans and Africans on the continent. We often put ourselves in a box or in a situation of thinking that we can't compete with the rest of the world or we don't have the skills or the technology, the bandwidth to be able to challenge what is done in America, what is done in Europe, and that's where I think we need to change our thinking. It's where I think we need to look at what technology is. Technology will continue to improve, will continue to develop, will continue to go from point A to point B. It gets funded and pushed forward by individuals. Those individuals are you and I. We have always seen through the history of man that there has always been a need, and once the need has been identified, solution, solutions have come up. And yes, some of them have taken a long time, and some of them have, done, have been done fairly quickly. 3,500 BC, some guy had the brilliant idea to take a, a wheel and attach it to a wagon, and your first mode of transport was created. Since then, everything from submarines, um, rockets, supersonic jets, has all been created, which started out as a need to move from point A to point B. Very simple in itself. What has happened, though, in all of this time is that the world goes and looks at it and says, well, are we reaching the stage where technology is taking over, where the Internet is destroying everything else? People are afraid that the Internet is going to replace television, going to replace radios, and then you're going to have the situation, well, I don't have TV anymore. I can tell you assuredly that television or the future of television is television. The future of radio is radio. The Internet and digital technologies that exist is bridging the gap between them. It's taking them out of being in a silo and putting them in a place that's connected. So whether you're sitting in America or South Africa or in Australia, you're allowed to interact, you're allowed to experience a brand that was created here or there or anywhere. Being connected is going further. And with the way that our world is shaping up at the present moment, you would know that there's huge hype around uh, social media. There's even bigger hype around location-based services, about how your GPS is becoming an interactive part of your life. And I mean, I'll give you a little bit of insight into that. Nokia, as of recently, have launched a service where you can get voice-guided navigation free of charge on any mobile device that has GPS. So you can take your cell phone and you'll be able to connect to a GPS satellite and you'll have voice-guided service. What does it mean for you? Well, it means that we're reaching a point in society where two years ago, the only, thing that had a, the only person that had a GPS was the really rich guy driving the Mercedes-Benz who stuck it out the, on his windscreen. It's changing to now, if I have a cell phone that has a GPS, I can get that same service. That is the learning point for us as South Africans. It's trying to establish that, yes, while technology gets developed and initially it may just serve for the elitist, it will reach a point where it reaches mass society. Social media, at one stage, Facebook was for only students in Harvard College. It, it, it grew and developed and became something that then became bigger. It's now at a stage where you don't have to be on a computer to interact in a social network. You can have a cell phone, a connected device. You can send advertising to a PS3. All of these mediums are becoming connected. And I mean, if you've ever watched um, Discovery Channel, and you ever looked at what the future is about, they tell you you'd be able to set up your fridge so that when you finish your bottle of milk, your fridge connects to your pick and pay, and your pick and pay knows you don't have any milk. And at the end of the month when you do your groceries, they deliver it for you. It's becoming a world of convenience, a world where whatever you do, whatever you want to do is becoming easily accessible to you or to anybody. 
who in the crowd knows what those five icons are for and what good reason would I have to put them up? Oh, wow. Come on, guys. They're all South African. What else? Do we not know them? Pioneers. What did they pioneer? Good. Do you know his name? Okay. Chris Barna, Critiskio Hospital, did the first human-to-human heart transplant. South African. The very first guy, his name is Alan Cormack. Do you know what he invented? He was a professor, South African professor, working at Tux University, and he, with his team, came up with a CAT scan machine. That same CAT scan machine that we use internationally, worldwide. The third person, if you're into motor racing, you should know that face. Jody Sketch, the 1979 F1 world champion. The Johannesburg Stock Exchange is the largest stock exchange on the African continent. The FIFA 2010 World Cup will, for the first time in history, be hosted on South African soil. So it's not like South Africans are silly. It's not like we don't have the skill or the ability or the talents to go out and do great and wonderful and amazing things. The problem is that we often sideline ourselves and put us into the situation of thinking we can't compete on a global scale. That, I assure you, is not true. Where are we headed towards in South Africa, in Africa, in the world? Where are we going and what can we do about it? The things that we see happening are leading to, you, to a very simple point, that everything, doesn't matter what the technology is, is going to be connected, it's going to be linked, it's going to be accessible to the widest audience. Why is mobile taking off at the rate that it is now? It's because it has a higher penetration than a computer. And if you take a, a township like Soweto, there is something like two or three percent of people there that have access to a computer. Yet there's a 99 percent penetration of a mobile phone. Which is why whatever we're doing, whatever we're developing, whatever we're building, wherever the world is going, is headed towards allowing the content that you have, the services that you're offering to reach the widest audience. How is it possible? There are three devices that have stuck up, and I, I, this is kind of where my heart lies in the world of digital, is all things mobile. And at the moment, if you take a company like Nokia, they have these devices that you see, the green one and the white one. And the fancy thing about them is they're built from nanotechnology, which means that that cell phone can bend and fold and turn and twist and makes it fun to use, makes it interactive. It means it can be my cell phone, it can be an MP3, it can be anything I want it to be. Technology is getting smaller and smaller and smaller just the way it's going. The iPad, which caused a recent stir, which has shaped so many businesses in, in the last month or so, has done that not because it's the most amazing device on the internet or on the world. has done that not because it's the greatest creation ever made. It's done it because it's changed the way people think. The way we've gone from a traditional, I want a computer, to thinking far beyond that. I want to be more agile. I want to be able to take my work, be portable about it. And so other companies are following suit and trying to develop for it. The world of mobile leads us to integration, leads us to intelligence. It's where the internet is going. You've often heard Web 2.0, Web 3.0, and even Web 4.0. The point of all of these different stages of the internet is to get to a single point where intelligence leads the web. It's where I don't have to build 20 different um, single pages for an internet to understand what I want it to do, or for the internet to understand what I want it to do. I build and design an intelligent website that will understand how the needs work, exactly the way with the pick and pay example that I use. How do we apply it to business? Well, it's kind of taking the pick and pay checkers approach to Woolies, where you can go and buy a can of beans from checkers and fine, it'll be cheap and it'll be fantastic and wonderful, or you can go to Woolies and you can buy a bean salad, already washed, already cleaned, all the ingredients added and you're getting value. What does it mean? What's the example? Well, it's really simple. You can take your sales team and you can shove them out in the world and sure, they'll do a fantastic job. Or you can take your sales team, integrate them with your marketing, marketing team using digital media, digital avenues that exist, and offer a better product. As South Africans, we have to stop living in our silos that exist. We have to start living outside it and start interacting and integrating with the rest of society and the rest of the world. This is what we often fail in doing. We often think that our technology, our understanding, our brilliance is ours. It isn't. Our brilliance is to better us as South Africans and in so doing, better our country, better our continent, and lead us to somewhere greater and somewhere so much better. 
Change is what is needed. And the change from the old method to the new method is where we need to go from. The old method may have worked perfectly yesterday, but I assure you today there is a better, far simpler way of doing it than existed yesterday. What we have in South Africa is a problem of transition. We don't like to explore and go into new realms. We prefer where we're comfortable and safe. It's that thinking that causes us or causes the world to look at us and say, well, that is why South Africa is a third world country. That is not the truth. The reality of it is we have to change our thinking initially and understand that the technology that gets developed, the technology that comes out of our country, is technology that is aimed at bettering the world. Where are all things digital going? All things digital is going to you and I being able to stand up as individuals and say that we can change Africa, we can change the world, not because we think our products and our services are inferior, but we think they're better. The examples that I used in my presentation are nothing fake. They're all real South African products, some of them. The technologies that we have in transportation, the car train, we have uh, South African Airways flights, amazing jets that have been created. We have holographic projection. Now, that's the stuff you see in the movies where people move things around. It isn't just an American trend or a European trend. It's here in South Africa. Tonight, there's a company that is the company there, Alexia, launching that service are launching the service where you can stand here and you can be a holograph in Sweden, wherever you want to be, and you can do the same presentation. It is not the future that we see in movies. It's the future that's taking place now. And I challenge you as South Africans to change your mindset and to start realizing that to develop our country doesn't start with the technology. It starts with us as individuals. Thank you.